God has given me such an amazing revelation. He just kept pouring it out and pouring it out. I had to take out so much from this word tonight. Um, but I'm going to give you um, the core of what God sent me here to give you. So um, what I want to start by saying is this, that we're living in a time of global persecution. Persecution has hit this world uh, in our lifetime, and it's impacted not just us, but the world uh, as a whole. We have watched over the last 11 months an entire world system take a knee to a disease threatening our society. And what it's done is not only threaten our society, but it's also tested our faith. Our, our faith is being tested like never before. And if we don't have a strong allegiance to God, there is a, a strong possibility that, that some may not be able to withstand all the persecution that's about ready to hit the world in these last days. Many people can become victims of apostasy. A great falling away is what the Bible talks about in the scriptures. We're talking about believers who have faith in Jesus, but because of the persecution in the world and in the church, they fall away. Now, never think that you can't fall because you can fall. The Bible says, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So we all have to be aware of how we're walking with God and how our allegiance to God and how much we're committed to God. We have to be completely aware and walk cautiously and not be prideful because this spirit can take even the strongest of men and women down. And what God is doing or what God is building, and I'll say this, in our church is a spirit of allegiance that is going to be built in, in the end time believers, okay? A spirit of allegiance. Now, allegiance will not cower. Allegiance will not give way to persecution. Allegiance says things like, till death do us part. Allegiance is like a blood covenant. It is stronger than a, than, than a commitment. It says, I am with you for a lifetime, whether it be good or bad, I'm staying with God. And we have to get to that place where we're committed to God no matter what. Let's define this word allegiance because I want you to, I really want this to sink in. I really sense an urgency. If, I, if I'm yelling, it's because I, I'm, I sense an urgency to, to tell you these things because I want to see you in heaven. I, I want to be in heaven. And, and we have to be urgent and, and we have to be uh, 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 on top of this because we want to see our, everyone in heaven. We want to see our loved ones in heaven. We want everyone to make it, but the devil is just so crafty, and he's just crept in and deceived the whole world, okay? Allegiance means this. It means unwavering loyalty. Say that with me. Unwavering loyalty and faithfulness to God. Faithfulness to God, not only God, but to his word to his church, and to his purposes, right? Allegiance to God, to his word, to his church, and to his purposes. Notice there is no I in this definition. It is not about me. It is about him and his will and his word and his church and his purposes. It's, it's completely about Jesus. Now, to break allegiance to any one of these is to break allegiance to them all. In other words, you cannot say that I'm faithful to God and not be faithful to his church. It doesn't work that way. 
His church is his bride. His church is a part of God. So we cannot say we're allegiant to one without the other. That makes sense? Now, in this passage of scripture that we're going to read, the allegiance of Paul and Silas is about to be tested. Our allegiance will be tested. Everyone in this room or anyone watching, we'd be foolish to believe that our allegiance will not be tested. We'll all run through the fire. We'll all be tested in, in different levels, but nobody gets to escape this process. Paul and Silas are God's apostles, and their allegiance to God is going to go through the ringer, and we're going to read about it. Their testimony in this scripture will, will act as a measuring rod. And we can gauge our allegiance by what they did for God. Okay, so let's compare ourselves or our own allegiance to what they went through. In the book of Acts chapter 16, and we're going to read verses 16 to 18. We're going to start right there and we're going to see these men go through this process of allegiance. In verse 16, it starts by saying this. Now it happened as we went to prayer. Where are they going? They're going to prayer. A simple prayer meeting. That's all they wanted to do. They just wanted to go to a simple prayer meeting. That doesn't sound bad, does it? That sounds pretty easy. Let's just go to the prayer meeting. As they walk to this prayer meeting, the Bible says this. That a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us. All right? A girl possessed with a spirit met us. Now that word met us, it means this. It's like a hostile military meeting. It wasn't just, hi, I'm here to meet you. No, it was aggressive by nature. It's like when two, uh, two uh, uh, people or two uh, armies meet on a battlefield. They meet in the middle and they go over all the logistics of what it's about ready to take place. So she's meeting them as an act of war against them and against this prayer meeting. The Bible says that she brought her masters much profit by her fortune telling. And this girl, the Bible says in verse 17, it says that she followed Paul and us. And she cried out as she was following them. And she said, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She did this in a sense of mockery. She wasn't supporting them at all. She was blaspheming. And the Bible says in verse 18 that she did this for many days. For many days. Now, how, have you ever felt like something was against you, not just for one day, but for many days? That's what was going on here. It just wasn't a one-day event. It continued day after day after day. They're on their way to a prayer meeting, a simple prayer meeting. The problem is that a witch is following them. The devil sent a human slave possessed with a spirit of divination. Her job is to harass and to shadow Paul as he walks to this prayer meeting. She is blaspheming. She is mocking. She is distracting. She is trying to get in the way and divert Paul from his allegiance to pray. And she did this for many days. She was persistent. She was relentless. She was well-trained. 
she was completely committed to her assignment. When Paul moved, she moved with him. When Paul stopped, she would stop. And what that shows us is that the demonic realm is very allegiant. They are committed day and night to chase you down. They are committed to, to chasing these men of God down and preventing this prayer meeting from happening. Somebody say that must have been some prayer meeting. The devil has allegiance. His demons have allegiance. His children have allegiance. We have to have greater allegiance to God than demons do for the devil. If we're going to withstand the attacks, we have to have allegiance that's greater than theirs. Now, I would say just in this room alone that some of you all had some allegiance you once had for the devil. It got real quiet right there, but that's okay. You had allegiance. You understand this word because you would do anything to get that, to get them drugs. You would do anything to get in that bar. You would do anything to get to the club. You would do anything to get to that place where the devil wanted you to be. And nothing could stop you. You serve the devil with total allegiance. And what God is asking us to do is to join the other side, not go back and forth, but to choose a side in this last day and say, I am allegiant to God. I'm not allegiant to my old life. I'm not allegiant to the devil. I'm not allegiant to alcohol. I serve Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, you have it in you. You have it in you. You have it in you. In Acts chapter 16, this read on. The Bible says this, that Paul became greatly annoyed. I like that. He got worked up. He got worked up as we did. I think every Christian needs to get worked up a little bit. Every Christian needs to have a breaking point where they just get tired of demons and opposition and the devil and, and, and things coming against them that they just get kind of worked up. That's okay. That is okay. And Paul, when he felt this annoyance in him, the Bible says that he turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Verse 19. But when her masters, underline that word masters. When her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Underline that word, authorities. Paul just dealt with a witch. But the devil had other allegiant followers working on his behalf. In these ten verses, there are a total of six demonic divisions working for the devil on assignment against Paul. There will be the witch, the masters, the authorities, and then will come the magistrates, the multitude, and the jailer. The entire city was under allegiance to the devil. The devil was in the jails, the devil was in the government, the devil was on the streets, the devil was in the community. The devil in the city of Philippi was all over the place. And the goal of, of the demons in that city was to stop the Christians from coming into their city. And in and, and this moment to prevent a prayer meeting from taking place. Tell your neighbor that must be some prayer meeting. Verse 20. It says that they brought Paul and Silas to the magistrates. That's a fourth division right there. 
underline that word magistrates. And they said to them, these men being Jews, they exceedingly trouble our city. Another translation says this, they were Christian troublemakers in our city. Notice that they said our city. The devil had claim to the entire city. It was his city. He ruled the city. He called it our city. It doesn't belong to the Christians. It doesn't belong to God. It doesn't belong to Jesus. This is our city. There was demonic principalities in every sector of the city of Philippi. But God, say but God. But God, what he did is this. He raised up some troublemakers. He raised up some troublemakers. Troublemakers who were not afraid to go into the devil's city. Troublemakers who were not afraid, who were allegiant to God, to go into the devil's city, to go into the hornet's nest and have a prayer meeting. Now, he couldn't use just anybody. He had to use someone who could handle the opposition. Someone who wouldn't fold under pressure. Someone who could remain allegiant to the assignment to have this prayer meeting. The prayer meeting must take place. And Paul was counting on allegiant apostles, allegiant servants to carry out this prayer meeting. Tell somebody that's some prayer meeting. What a prayer meeting. I want to be at that prayer meeting. Let's read on. Verse 16. Chapter 16, let's read 22. The Bible says this, Then the, magist the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded Paul and Silas to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison. And they commanded the jailer to keep them secure. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison, the shoe or the hole. And he fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, most people, including Christians, would have already given up, to be honest. I probably would have gave up as soon as they tore my clothes off. I don't know what would have happened at that point. Most people would probably put out a text or a memo that says, we regret to inform you, but the prayer meeting has been canceled. Most people probably would have done that. Most people would maybe even deny their faith and say, I don't know him. I don't know Jesus. I don't know Jesus. I don't know Paul. I don't know who this guy is. Most people might even deny their faith. Some people might even question if this is even God's will. Is this even God's will? Did I go through this? Sometimes we question. We go through something bad and we question, is this even God? Or why am I even a part of this church if everything in my life is going bad? I thought I'd get saved and things would get good when in fact things are getting worse. And people walk away from God. People walk away from the church because things are not going that their way. But that is not the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel is you will remain faithful and loyal to God in spite of anything that comes your way. In spite of any demonic pressure. In spite of anything that comes against you. That you remain stable. I wish they would have told me that at the altar when I got saved. But people turn their back on the church. They turn their back on God. They turn their back on his purposes. You see, 
difficulty, it measures your allegiance. When you go through difficult times, it is going to measure how allegiant you are to God. It reveals if you're truly on board with God. If you find yourself in the home and then you're out of the home, you find yourself in church and then you're out of the church and you just toggle back and forth, it really reveals if you're really allegiant to God. Not everybody is allegiant to God. Some people go back and forth. But your allegiance will be tested. And you will find out who's really on board, who's really for you. It will show you who's really got your back. Who's really got your back. Because people will turn against you during these tough times. Paul is a totally allegiant to God. Completely allegiant to God. He is no stranger to scourging. He's no stranger to opposition. The Bible says that five times in the Bible, five times Paul received 39 stripes. That's 195 stripes. So when he said, I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ, he wasn't kidding. He had the scars that proved his allegiance to God. Tell your neighbor, show me your scars. He was not mamsy pamsy. He was not a wimp when it came to God. He was completely sold out to Jesus. Completely allegiant to his faith. And he had the marks to prove it. Praise God. Let's go on. Verse 25. Here's the good part. It says at midnight. At midnight. Tell your neighbor at midnight. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God in the prison. Now, I've done some crazy things at midnight in the past, none of which were praying and singing to God. My, how things change. Because at midnight, Paul and Silas are in the prison, in the shoe, in the center of the core of the prison, the lowest place, and they are having the prayer meeting, and they are singing hymns to God, and the Bible says that the prisoners were listening. They're listening. The prisoners are listening. They're listening to you. How you're going to respond if you're truly in this Christian uh, religion or this faith that you proclaim. The prisoners are watching you to see your allegiance. If you're going to stay with God, they're watching you. They're listening. The enemy did everything he could to stop this, didn't he? There were six divisions that came against Paul and Silas to stop this simple prayer meeting, but it didn't work. The Bible says because at midnight, at midnight inside the devil's city, inside the devil's prison, inside the core of that place, there were some troublemakers in that place that God Put there and their allegiance to, to God and to his prayers and to praising God. They were going up to God in that, in that lowest place of the city. Now, these were no ordinary prayers. These were prayers that come from prison. It's easy to praise God. It's easy to pray to God when everything is fine and free and dandy and you're having a nice day. It's easy to praise God, but when you're on the mountaintop, 
the kids are fine, the wife is fine, the cars are running good, the dogs are happy, there's food in the fridge, everybody's happy, everyone's just walking around just praising God. But we have to learn what allegiance means is that can you praise God when you're in prison? Can you praise God when all hell is coming against you? Can you praise God when, when difficulty strikes the home? When, when the husband leaves you or when the wife leaves you? When the kids are acting a mess? When you lose your job? When things are going just haywire? Can you still praise God in that place? That proves your allegiance right there. Now, they were praising God. And the Bible says that other prisoners who had been bound by the devil were listening. They were listening to their prayers. They were listening to their praise. And the Bible says in verse 26 that suddenly, say suddenly, there was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. And everyone's chains were loosed. No wonder the enemy tried to stop this prayer meeting. God wanted to work from the inside out. God wanted to put... An allegiant soldier, an allegiant follower, an allegiant servant. He wanted to put a soldier who would remain faithful in the core of the devil's prison and they would look like a prisoner. It's going to take a prisoner to free prisoners. It's going to take a victim to free those who are victimized. It's going to take someone who was abused so that they can free others who are being abused. In other words, you were made to be like them so that you might save them. Isn't that what Jesus did? I have to become like them so that I can save them. You wonder why you went through everything you went through. Why you were locked up. Why you were abused. Why you were cheated on. Why all these things happened to you. So that you can understand how people feel. And so that you can help them get free. Wow, isn't that amazing? The plan was this. Put them in the center of their worst condition. I'm going to put you, I don't know if that sounds like a good plan, God. But I'm going to put you in the center of their worst condition. And in that place, here's the plan. I want you to release your loudest praise. In that place, in the worst place that you could ever be, I want to put you right there. And I know that you're a legion. And I know that you're faithful. And in that place, I want you to release your loudest praise. I want you to pray your greatest prayers. And when you do that for me, I'm going to cause the prison doors to open and the gates of hell are going to fall off their hinges and things are going to implode from the inside out. As you pray to God and you lift prayers to God and you praise God, you're going to set all the prisoners free. All the prisoners are going to be free by your praise. By your prayer, by your allegiance. They're going to watch you. They're going to listen to you. And you're going to demonstrate what an allegiant soldier for God looks like. I'm talking to the men right now. Allegiance. The Bible says this, and we'll close right now. That all the prison doors were opened. Every single one. Not some. The Bible says this, 
that everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone. Not one person, not just one person, not just two, every other cell. It was everyone's chains were loosed. I feel some chains breaking tonight. I feel some chains falling off tonight. In this room and all the watch parties that are taking place, chains are going to break off tonight. The Bible says that every prisoner in that city was set free. Every prisoner in that jail was set free. Get you know what that means? There were some escaped convicts running around the city. There were a bunch of escaped convicts running around Philippi. And you know what they're saying? They're saying this. I got set free at a prayer meeting. At a prayer meeting. Inside a place where there shouldn't be a prayer meeting. And I say that that is what's going to happen in this church on Sunday. That there's going to be praise going up to God. There's going to be worship going up to God. When at a time when there shouldn't be this kind of worship, at a time where there shouldn't be this kind of praise, that we're going to lift our highest praise to God. And we're going to watch prisoners get set free. Do you believe that? Why don't you just clap to the Lord tonight if you believe that? Give God a big shout of praise in this house tonight. If you're at home tonight, just stand up and just throw all the pillows on the floor and just worship God tonight because he's about ready to set this city free. This city it doesn't belong to the devil. This city doesn't belong to hell. This city belongs to Jesus Christ and he's looking for some insurgents, some men of God, some women of God, some children of God who are going into the core of hell and we're going to save those who are lost. You're going to save those that are closest to you. They're listening to you tonight. The children are watching you, Dad. They're watching you, Mom. Their future is relying on you being allegiant to God. Think of your kids. Think of your wife, your family, your grandchildren. You must remain allegiant. The time is coming where God will sift the wheat from the chaff. A great separation. And you're either on God's side or you're on the devil's side. There will be no in between. You cannot live life your way. Your life belongs to God. Allegiance to God to his church, to his word, and to his purposes. There's no compromise. No more going back. No more toggling between two sides. Choose this day whom you will serve. I beg you. I plead with you. I implore you. Choose Jesus choose him tonight if you're watching tonight I'm going to invite Pastor Robert back up and we really really want people to be born again Pastor we want people to be in heaven and worshiping God for eternity but this is where we decided at this time we decide right here yes. where we'll spend eternity. Yes, that's right. That's right. What a powerful word we've heard tonight. End time allegiance. And as we're now coming to a close in this service, like Pastor Joe just mentioned, the word of God says choose who you're going to serve today. Today choose who you're going to serve. What side are you on? I want everyone here to bow their heads and close their eyes at men's home. You're at your house. This is you and God right now. Just close your eyes for a second. You got a mom. You got a dad. Get your kids around this time right now. Maybe invited a neighbor. Say, hey, this is, 
This is an important time of the service. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're saying, Pastor, I want to be allegiant to God 100%. We're not playing the fence one day in church, one day out. One day at church, one day in the club, which clubs are not open. One day doing this, one day drinking, one day doing this. And man, I want to be sold out. That's what allegiance means, to be sold out to a cause, is to be committed. So if you're at your house right now, you're saying, that's me. I want to be sold out. I want God to forgive me of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go to heaven. I want to give God my everything. You're at your home right now, men's home here. Say this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I ask forgiveness. I repent of all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am allegiant to you, God. I'm allegiant to your word, to the purpose for my life. I am allegiant to the church. Jesus, I give you my all. I surrender 100%. Today I'm saved. Today I'm born again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we give a big shout of amen? And yeah, if you just said that prayer, you are saved. You are born again. You're at home right now. Maybe you're at your work site right now. Go to the app. Or actually just go to igotsaved.com. Really simple. It'll pop up on your screen right now. igotsaved.com. So why should I do that? We're going to help you with your walk with Christ. We have some great discipleship classes and we'll get you baptized. Great stuff. igotsaved.com. Pastor Joe, give it up for Pastor Joe. What a great word. You're at home. End time. Allegiance. Totally allegiant to God. We love you guys. Don't forget, this Sunday, we're resuming our in-person services, 9 and 11. And our goal, let's invite five people. Let's invite five people for Sunday service and let's see the chains like they did tonight fall off, people. We love you guys. Have a great night. We'll see you Sunday, 9 and 11. And at 1 o'clock, that'll be the watch party. That'll be online. God bless you guys. Have a great night.